Hello and uh, welcome to the Enterprise Suite uh, CRM module demo. Okay, um, the first screen we see as we log in uh, is the uh, left hand menu, the tree menu, uh, where we've got a new section. So we want to create a new lead, new prospect, new customer, that's where we do it. We want to find uh, a lead or a prospect or a customer uh, or any of these things. Uh, we could obviously use find. We've got a tools section uh, for various dashboards. Okay, so dashboard I can first see is my calendar. Um, and I can see this sort of graphically uh, my calendar. I can see a list of to do's. Yeah, I can see a list of callbacks to, I need to make. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so um, let's create an activity. Okay, so let's say I'm going to create a meeting on the 21st. Uh, I can do this by double clicking on the actual day, or I can say new activity, or I can create a new activity from, from the menu. Okay, so I just double click on here, it'll open the, the activity form. Uh, so the type is meeting. Okay, um, I'm going to say subject um, to discuss uh, uh, a network quote. Okay, I've got a private button here. Okay, so what that means is that if I click it as private, then people can see I'm busy, but they can't actually see what I'm doing. Okay, uh, the next field is who am I meeting with. Okay, so if I type toy in and hit return, it do a while search on all my contacts and all my entities. Um, and obviously I can pick uh, on any one of those okay so I'll pick I'll pick this one on uh, Mr. Uh, Andrew Shannon at the Toy House um, it automatically assigns it to me I'm logged in as admin okay so uh, it's put the admin user uh, there I could assign it to anyone else I want to as well as a team uh, a sales rep or a territory as well and those were defaulted if I had defaults uh, the start date of that meeting uh, the time uh, duration uh, things uh, obviously like notes okay so whatever we're going to do uh, on that meeting you know we need to kind of uh, do this uh, and that okay who are the attendees okay so obviously it picks me as default um, I, I can obviously assign it to someone else if I want to um, I can say I need the basic user uh, in with this as well uh, I can also say uh, I need the conference room and I need the overhead projector Okay. Now, obviously, with so many things, if it's just me, okay, it'd be quite straightforward. But because I've got kind of so many things here, I need to look at availability, and I can see that uh, everyone's available on that date. Yeah, um, and I'll say, should we do it at two o'clock? Okay, and that changed the actual time up here. Uh, if it was, if any of these were busy, they'd be, um, they'd have red red blocks marked, so you could see that they were busy. I can send everyone an email to say I've made you an appointment. Um, Okay, and that's it. So that's that's basically a very very quick and easy meeting. I can attach documents and notes as well if I want to, and I can see the sort of history uh, to it. Um, I can also categorise uh, this particular type of meeting if I want to. Uh, so things like I don't know, it's a sales visit. Okay, uh, I could link it to an opportunity or a campaign wave as well, uh, and I could and obviously assign it a colour. There's also a custom fields section. Uh, if I had any custom fields that I need to fit, wanted to fill out at the same time. All right, so I'll save and close that. And then what you'll be able to see there is I've got a kind of meeting uh, in on that day. Um, okay, let's. Uh, if I look at uh, my group calendar, my grouping calendar, um, I could group this by team, by contact, by entity. If I group it by the people assigned to, then what I could do is I can split my diary up into what I, what I'm doing, yeah, and uh, what other people are doing, uh, or you know what type of meeting it is. Um, okay, so we can also look at this as a timeline. Um, we can also look at this uh, from a week point of view or a working day point of view. I can also look at it as a list, see what, um, uh, e easily if there's, if there's a lot of them. Um, okay, uh, we've also got an activity filter. Okay, so I can look at just between a date range. I can just look at certain activity types, certain things with priorities. Uh, so I can just look at the high priority items. Um, I could also look at uh, completed and cancelled items as well if I wanted to. Uh, I can just look at a particular sales rep type calendar or territory or, or a particular type of activity. Uh, I'm just looking at uh, I'm looking at all at the minute, but I could just look at my calendar, a list of people's calendar, or just my team, and obviously apply that. And I can save these filters as well. Okay. Um, so let's create another type of activity, which is maybe a call activity. Okay. So I'm making a call. Okay, to someone. Okay, it's uh, about the quote. Uh, it's to uh, my toy customer again. Okay, so I'll say Toys R Us. Uh, we discussed this, that, and the other, whatever it was. 
um, and I can say right okay Mr uh, uh, Miss uh, Ali McClory uh, that basically I'm going to call you back in uh, a week's time okay so if I create call back what this will basically do is it'll save the call okay and it'll mark it as complete as a record that I actually did that call and obviously whatever notes I've got on there um, and I can say right I'll call you back in a, a week's time okay so I'll say okay yeah and that'll create a call back type activity okay so if I just refresh my list here you can see that um, I've got here um, that I need to call back uh, in you know uh, as part of my callbacks yeah to actually do I can right mouse click this and say right I've completed it or cancelled it or I can say it's in progress or I can open it back up again yeah and uh, then you can actually see it okay um, okay so briefly that's my calendar um, my to do's which just roll forward yeah if I don't do them um, okay, I've got one there for pick up the laundry as a reminder or whatever uh, whatever kind of so instead of writing down on your pad or whatever things you need to do you can actually make a log of them as to do's there okay um, other dashboards we've got on here because uh, that's the calendar one yeah we've also got a workflow one which means that if you wanted to you could just kind of use a met use this as your menu if you wanted to so I'll just say find activity or new lead or whatever I could do it from this menu um, we've also got a cases dashboard okay so what this is uh, is you can log uh, activities again but case type activities and these are things for things like complaints or um, you know problems uh, and you want to keep track of them yeah so for example as in a software business we uh, we log all our support calls yeah uh, I know that 96% of them are all dealt with on the first phone call uh, but obviously there's always those that you can't deal with straight away and what this does is it allows you to keep track of those and not forget about them and not lose them okay so um, the first thing I see is obviously this um, this particular um, pipe uh, that sort of says that's how many logged that's how many overdue, that's how many in progress I can also change this to uh, be oh sorry well it, it is on the service level agreement so I can say well, just give me the overdue ones yeah then it'll just filter that down immediately yeah but I can also look at it from the the status point of view as well okay they're, they're all at the kind of same status um, okay, I can forget the chart and just go straight to the list. You know, I can have the chart as well. It's obviously up to you. Um, on uh, all these kind of lists, yeah, I can group. So I can group by maybe the user assigned to, yeah, and uh, uh, or you know a, a multiple of columns. Um, okay, so let's, let's log a new case. Okay, so uh, this is let's say uh, the network is down or something. Okay, who is it? Okay, it's Mr. Toy Customer again. I'll say Rainy Tay Toys. Um, now, with with cases, yeah, you can have what's called a service level agreement. So it puts today's date and time in for me. Okay, and it automatically adds whatever the service level agreement is attached to this particular customer. Okay, so uh, and then it's put the um, okay. So I'm logging this at uh, 1734. So if it was eight working hours, it would be. Uh, tomorrow at 17:34, but I think this is attached to four working hours, so that's why it's put one o'clock. Yeah, okay. Um, it depends, obviously, what um, what uh, working calendar and working hours we we work. Because looking at that, I think it's uh, a bit different. So if I look here, I've got service level of calendar. So uh, so um, I've got one set up for England and Wales. So these are all the bank holidays uh, for uh, England and Wales. Okay, you can see we've got some other ones on there as well. You can make up your own, add your own company type holidays. Um, we've also got a calendar. Okay, so if I look at the default one, okay, we can say that we work Monday to Friday, nine to five. Yeah, so it knows that uh, when I put all these together in a service level agreement, and say, okay, that's the def that's the calendar we use, so we know what holidays we've got. That's the um, uh, holiday calendar. Okay, um, so that's that's the working week, and that's the calendar, and that's the number of hours. So that's when it it knows when it's looking at um, this particular thing. Um, it knows how, how when the due date uh, of that particular case is. So that we can we'll put more details about the problem. Yeah, uh, and obviously if we can solve it there and then, obviously we can put details about the solution. If there are any particular items, it's to do with. Yeah, then obviously we can log that as well. It's to do with this 19 inch monitor just so we can report on what are our problem items. Um, and obviously we can save and close that. Okay, uh, we can obviously attach documents and notes as well. But there we go, so we've got uh, another outstanding case. Um, 
Okay, so other dashboards we have uh, are for things like opportunities. Okay, so opportunities. Uh, if if you're a kind of company that just does a quote, yeah, type some items on and you know set, uh, email it off, then I could probably uh, uh, use that as my opportunity management, a list of outstanding quotes. Yeah, um, opportunities I guess are more for if you want to assign. We can assign quotes to opportunities. Yeah, uh, that you do in the system, but you can also, uh, if you do, let's say, a word document, yeah, because your quotes have to be kind of lots of text and images and all that kind of stuff, uh, and maybe spreadsheets as well, and it, you know, uh, and t t drawings. Then you might want to say, well, I want to set this up as a kind of opportunity where all these things can go. Okay, so um, again, if you look at the dashboard, here's all my outstanding opportunities, or you know, I can have my team's outstanding opportunities. I've got rights to do that. Uh, my my pipeline here. Yeah, it tells me the various stages. Yeah, that the um, these opportunities are at. Um, so again, I can group by any box I want to. Um, so I could group by stage. Yeah, and obviously then I can kind of look at each individual stage and see what where these opportunities are. Um, okay, so let's just create a new opportunity so you can get an idea. Okay, so let's say uh, they want a new software. Okay. And the contact name, I'll put toy in there again and I'll just pick on rainy day toys. It's in progress. Uh, when do I expect to close this deal? Okay, well, let's say I expect to close it uh, by end of December. What stage? Okay, so this, these are user, user definable stages that define your sales process. So, for example, you know, our, you know, ours is a typical example. We prelim quote someone, then we have a meeting, then we may have to have another meeting, or we kind of uh, we're awaiting the order. So, I'll just say uh, meeting arranged, let's say, uh, brief details about what the actual uh, opportunity is about. Um, and then I could just put a value in here, whatever it might be, and that could be that. Or what I can do is I can go to my documents tab and, and attach documents or images or spreadsheets or whatever I want to do. Yeah, so say yeah. Okay, so I'll I'll, ass I'll assign that particular picture, but it could as well just be a document or a PDF or a Word document or whatever. Uh, and then I can accumulate them all here. Okay, so but we also have the ability to uh, assign quotes I've already done. But also create new quotes. Yeah. So if I create a new quote here, it'll launch the new quote form, and it will automatically, if you look here, assign this to that particular opportunity. Okay. So I'll just quote some items. Yeah. Just to give you an idea. Um, obviously, in the customer module demo, there'll be a demo of the the quote form and the uh, the actual sales order form and stuff. Uh, I can print this off here from here. Yeah. So I can go to print. I could email it straight off. Yeah. If I wanted to, or I can print preview it. Um, so you can see it automatically puts your logo and address on you know these boxes are all kind of arranged and the layout's totally amendable um, in here obviously if I picked email it would email it we've also got something called lowest cost route so if they didn't have a, it would try and email it if they didn't have an email address it would fax it if they haven't got a fax number then obviously it prints it off so you can send it um, and it automatically pits the email address up yeah from the actual contact on the actual quote form okay all right so let's just kind of save and close that and if I just kind of move tab a minute, move back again, you'll see that there's all the quote or quotes, yeah, that um, are on this particular opportunity. And if you look here, yeah, you've got an or a quote revenue at um, a value. And what it'll do is when you actually put this into the list, yeah, it'll actually if there's an estimated value, it use it'll use that. But if there's a quoted value, that'll override it. And if there's actually a value where you converted that quote to an order, yeah, then it would put that value in. And if you if you convert the quote to an order, it'll automatically complete the opportunity for you if you want it to. Okay, so that's opportunity management. Okay, um, we've got a uh, document management. Uh, this is kind of um, where you can store memos or quotes or you know documents, images, you know, just so everyone has access to them that you want access to them. Uh, just a way of neat, neatly kind of uh, assigning uh, documents. Uh, we've got report section. Uh, so in each module, you've got reports area where you can say, give me a list of you know outstanding cases by due date or opportunities by contact or whatever. Um, and okay, so that's as far as I'll take the dashboards. Okay, so I'll take that grouping off there. So it's just grouped by everybody that I've got a filter on for. Um, okay, so then we start looking at the the, the new side of the menu. Okay, so uh, new lead. 
okay uh, leads are for things like um, you buy a database in and you don't know whether they're hot or cold yet yeah, you just dump them into the database and then you can obviously use them for your target list and all this kind of stuff but it may have also be things like uh, people call someone calls up and says I'm interested in buying whatever your product is and literally you just want to note the details yeah um, and maybe assign a call for someone to call them back or you just leave the leads outstanding so someone can actually look at the leads and say yeah okay I'll, I'll deal with these leads uh, whenever they've got time okay so for example a lead name um, let's call this I don't know fast toys limited um, and the contact uh, is Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Tony Ferrari or something there we go uh, the address if you've got it um, the, the kind of people that call in sometimes you just want to get their name telephone number yeah and uh, brief details maybe their email address as well okay so uh, Tony uh, fast toys UK okay uh, again custom fields if you wanted to log custom fields when you log these leads any details about it and that, that might be it yeah so you just log that lead it's part of your outstanding lead list yeah or you may actually want to also log, log an activity straight off here for someone to actually call them yeah so say yeah so I say call someone call them yeah about the call in okay that's it done obviously you can assign it to whoever you want to assign it to uh, okay so that's it so or you can deal with this by going if you go find find leads here's all my leads yeah so if I look at um, Where's, uh, where's my fast toys? There you go. There's my fast toys one. So I can look at this as my leads if they've been assigned to me, um, or just all the active leads that are there. Okay, so let's let's open that lead up again. Okay, so maybe now this lead I've talked to them, yeah, and yeah, okay, they're they're, they're interested in what we're buying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this lead. Oh, obviously, if they weren't and it wasn't a lead, I could disqualify it and that would cancel them off. Um, or I can convert the lead and I'm going to say I'm going to convert it to a prospect. I could convert them to a customer as well straight off the bat and I could create an opportunity as well. But I'm just going to, I'm just going to create them as a prospect uh, and say OK. And now what you'll notice is the form that's loaded up now okay, is uh, the, the prospect form. Okay, It's exactly like the customer form just with less tabs on it. Um, and you can see that obviously it's their name and address. It's filled out as much as it can. It's put the contact in the notes that we put in would be there uh, the activities would be there um, and obviously there's one activity to get to call that person which I should have logged off because obviously it would have been part of my callbacks uh, to do <coughs> you've obviously got things like cases the cases that are outstanding for this for this particular um, prospect opportunities emails documents the customer module will show you in more detail this form and I'll, I'll show you a bit more detail uh, um, later on um, okay so let's just save and close that Okay, so we'll close that. And if I go find prospect now, and obviously there's my fast toys one. Um, obviously you can group, you can sort, you can search. Yeah, so if I search by toy, for example, that will just list all the people with. Uh, well, that's a, it's a while search, so it goes across all fields in the actual database. Yeah, so I'm going to open up that prospect record, and now maybe they want to order something off us. Yeah, and now I'm going to convert them to an actual customer okay so now you can see obviously they've got a lot more tabs across here like you know credit transactions um, and uh, other things um, I'll, so from lead to prospect to customer is very very easy to do um, and obviously ve uh, ve very easy to uh, keep track of uh, who's kind of what kind of uh, status okay so let me just close that down and go to find customer yeah, and what I'll do is I'll pick on one that I've got more data in, so I can actually show you that form in more detail. Okay, so name and address, custom fields section again, uh, recent history. Okay, so what have I been invoicing and quoting them? Trading information like what's their balance on their account? Um, I've got uh, contacts down here, so you can see I've got two contacts. Uh, you can have as many contacts as you want. Um, you can have notes, uh, and literally adding a note is just as simple as. You know, whatever this note might be, I'll just put note example, and obviously got some details here. I'm just going to type some details in. Save and close that. And it's part of the notes. Activities. So these are all the activities that have been going on with this toy customer. I've got a little zoom button here. So if I zo use that zoom button, 
uh, you can see that it kind of moves this section up okay um, this gives me not just the outstanding ones but also the completed ones so I can see what's been going on but my activity filter will allow me to kind of get rid of the completed and cancelled ones if I want to uh, and obviously I can change the view and I can also add to do's and callbacks separately if I want to you've got nice little icons to say well that's a callback let me do a callback on that we've got a meet, couple of meetings arranged there's a case outstanding uh, good if you're talking to the customer you know and he says oh I've got a problem you know it's not been dealt with blah blah I can sort of say well hang on a minute uh, I can see that you logged this at uh, 1409 yeah it, well it's only you know uh, 1509 now uh, someone's on it and I can tell him all the details about it so I can open it up I can see what's going on I can say yeah this is all about your problem and obviously customers are much happier when they know that oh yeah okay it has been logged I can see that you know other people uh, everyone knows about it um, and that's the same and cases tab is just cases yeah and opportunities is just opportunities and I can see what opportunities are outstanding on that particular customer or prospect yeah emails back and forth we got a uh, uh, the ability to do pop three emails yeah um, obviously iron out the system as standard but you can also uh, there's a plugin to link this to exchange yeah so um, obviously everything can be sent and received by your exchange okay let's uh, look at documents now okay so these are documents that you can just you know attach to the record obviously if you're attaching documents to your opportunities and activities you don't need to do it here as well but this is for documents that you just might want to store against them uh, and wave activity okay so if we're gonna send them an email shot or a call list or do a letter to them or whatever it might be we can see what uh, waves they were actually uh, part of and what email shots they actually got so I can see that they got the call about the new product thing uh, we've sent them the new product email as well um, so quite a lot in one we've also got these little buttons okay so we can do a new quote from here a new sales order a new invoice uh, we can create a new contact from here we can do a new note uh, we can create a new activity the nice thing about doing them here is that um, when I say let's say create a new case or whatever it automatically fills in the customer detail for me and the SLA is straight there so I just have to kind of um, you know problem you know blah, blah blah you know and it's logged I see it done yeah and it's now on there okay um, we also have a setup tab um, where we have the currency that we're obviously going to trade in with this particular customer uh, payment terms so what we have is a group of payment terms not just one payment term because it might be that we give them 30 days but they could also pay by credit card if they wanted to or payment on order so because um, this also links to e-commerce um, you know on e-commerce when they're checking out you want to give them their payment options and obviously that's where that comes from and the same thing comes on shipping methods as well uh, for example if they're UK mainland yeah then obviously you can give them next day but if they're non-UK mainland then you can't really offer them next day it has to be kind of two or three day um, so what that does is that groups together the possible delivery um, shipping methods yeah that you can offer that particular customer or um, prospect uh, what's the default warehouse so when we're selling them stock which warehouse it would be better to obviously send sell from a warehouse that obviously is nearest to them if that's so obviously that's the, that, when you do a sales order or a quote that's the warehouse that would default in um, where did they originate from who they assigned to what's the default shipping delivery address um, who's the default contact for mailing and who's the default uh, contact for chasing debts um, We've got things on here for uh, the link to a rep, yeah, as well as obviously a team, yeah, or a territory, um, and if they are commissionable, uh, what kind of commission does this does this rep get a different commission on this particular customer? Uh, are they linked to a head office? So then you obviously you could group accounts together, um, and you can also um, send a statement to the head office, yeah, for the for the group accounts. What's their VAT reg and company reg? And we can also rank them. Uh, based on numerous criteria if I look at the contact tab when you look at the notes and activities and cases and opportunities on the contact tab it's specific to that contact yeah so when you look at the general tab yeah those things include uh, the cases and activities and opportunities across all contacts uh, but you can see specifically what's been going on with this particular contact you also have, you know, business phone, uh, the DDI number, and obviously the email and the mobile. You've got little kind of crosses on here to sort of say, well, 
uh, it's it's okay to call or it's not okay to email or, or call or fax yeah so just when you're doing a, a target list or a mail shot you can uh, exclude people that specifically said I don't want you to uh, um, email me or whatever uh, okay so um, let's have a look at uh, pricing so we can price things for customers uh, on a basic wholesale or retail price uh, that's the very basic kind of start uh, type of pricing. Uh, we've also got a pricing method which could be let's say last price paid, mark upon last cost price or pick a price list. Yeah, and obviously we can drill down that price list. Uh, pick, obviously pick the price list but I can also drill down the price list and say well, what's on that price list? Well these items are on the price list so uh, I pick some items and I can say that's the sell price for that item but I can also break it down and say by unit of measure uh, if they buy one to a hundred they get the nine pounds if they buy over a hundred yeah they can pay eight pounds and you can also do this um, by different units of measure so if I sold them by the case I could have quantity breaks on the case yeah if there's nothing in there then obviously it just defaults to the uh, base the, the default unit of measure for this item for this item um, so if I'd said I'd sold 50 ca uh, 10 cases at 50 yeah that would be uh, the equivalent of 500 so it would use the each pricing and five, the 500 would actually come into that band in there and they'd be £8 each okay so uh, you can also export this to Excel and bring it back in but uh, essentially uh, what, what I'm trying to uh, say here is that uh, for a customer uh, you can have uh, um, a, a basic wholesale retail price you can attach them to a price list you can also have band discounts um, on cat different categories as well you can also have special pricing so for on these items they pay this amount and you can also break that down to quantity breaks as well if you want to um, so this overrides everything then it obviously goes to the price list and if it's not in the price list it'll take the retail or wholesale price yeah so you've got quite a kind of a lot of price uh, a lot of pricing options there um, customer part numbers if you wanted to you can uh, detail items and put their particular code and description in so when you do a, a quote or a sales order or an invoice it'll have our stock code and description but it'll also have theirs underneath uh, so they can reference it easily uh, we've got an analysis tab so we can see roughly what's been going on from a trading point of view and also a transactional point of view uh, I've got a transaction tab to see all the outstanding quotes, orders, invoices I can drill down on any of these to see what was actually on them um, I can uh, look at the ledger. Yes, yeah, so we look at the ledger. I can see there's an invoice. I can drill down on that as well. There's the invoice date. There's the due date. There's the uh, customer order reference if there was one. If it was linked to a sales order or whatever. Uh, the total. And if there was, if this was in foreign currency, it would give me a base total as well. The base at uh, the outstanding amount and the base outstanding. Is there any settlement discount? I've also got a kind of attachments thing here, so I can see on this one. Yeah, we've actually got an attachment. Yeah, um, but that could be for a signed delivery note, it could be for whatever documentation you want to store behind that uh, that that record. Uh, I've also got is it in dispute, yeah, and if there was, you know, there's a reason. Um and you know I can see open and I can also see uh, the history as well if I want to. Um okay so on recent sales tab I can see what they've been buying yeah um, and if I'm talking to them obviously I can say we've well, been buying those. We've also got kind of a cross sell upsell uh, a thing that sort of says people that buy those also buy these items when you ask about them uh, I've got buying history okay so uh, I can see that um, in November they bought these yeah total for the years that so it looks at the trend for the last 12 months and says is the trend up or is it down yeah or is it sort of similar for a particular percentage yeah um, so uh, our status here is green because obviously it's November's the last month I've done on this system yeah um, so uh, as, of, as far as we're concerned uh, sales are on the up yeah uh, if if this November column yeah was kind of like uh, here for last December or whatever uh, and obviously nothing was in November then these would be red because obviously the trend is down um, okay and I can also see for quoted items yeah not just bought items yeah what they've been what they've been quoted on uh the credit receivables tab um this allows me to see what their outstanding debt is um I can zoom this up so I can see more detail about it I can see that they've got a receipt that's outstanding for 43p I've got the three invoices there for all for kind of you know 3000 pound or whatever um I can look at this in the customer or home currency I can see it by due date document date or calendar month I can also decide to um uh 
have my columns as seven days, fourteen, twenty-eight, or thirty. And then what a lot of people do is they sort by the oldest debt first. Okay, so I'm talking to the customer maybe, and I can see uh, invoice two, two, three, and two, two, four. They tell me they haven't got them, so I highlight them and I just go to this button here. Yeah, and I say right, okay, I'll email them off to you right now. There you go. Have you got them? Okay, um, and you know that's as easy as that. I can also say, well, you promised to pay me, yeah, by the end of the month, yeah. So what I can do is I can also mark these as payment promise dates, yeah. So next time I come and chase, yeah, obviously, yeah, I'll be able to see that, yeah, those are uh, those are there, and I can see, oh, okay, this one's it. This, this one had this one got broken, so they want a replacement or whatever, and I can see my notes about it. So when I chase it next time, I've got those. Um, delivery addresses okay so you have as many delivery addresses as you want and within each delivery address yeah you've got a lot of information as well obviously the delivery address itself but you've got contacts notes and activities uh, and documents etc against that particular delivery address and if you look at the setup you can see um, you can have different terms different delivery methods uh, you know do I need to book a time do I need, is it a special truck size um, and I can see just the transactions that went against this particular delivery address as well okay um, there are other tabs in here. Um, I won't go into too much detail here because uh, this is obviously a CRM demo, not a customer demo. Um, but hopefully, you get an idea of from this one form, yeah, whether it be a prospect or a leader or a customer, I can do an awful lot and I can see everything about it. So, if that customer's on the phone or I'm talking, you know, or I'm going to talk to that customer, I just look at this form and I can see everything that's going on and I can do everything from here as well. Okay, so let's um, go on from there. Um, we've looked at new opportunity. Okay, so let's create a target list. Okay, so uh, target lists, yeah, um, can be based on a lot of criteria. So let's go through that criteria. Okay, so do you want to target leads, prospects, customers, or customers and prospects? Well, I'm going to I'm going to um, target customers and prospects. The all contacts button. We have a default um, mailer um, mailing. Uh, contact yeah for a customer and a prospect um, so if I, if I t uh, don't tick that it'll just do the, the default one if I tick that though it'll include all the contacts yeah so if I had 10 contacts that were on customer yeah then effectively it would um, it would uh, it would it, it's, it's going to list them all okay so here's a description okay so uh, I'm going to call it customer and prospects yeah in the UK okay this thing's quite nice uh, is that include last contact criteria so as of today's date who haven't I contacted in the last 120 days yeah who haven't had an activity or a meeting or a call or call back or done a quote or an order for okay so that's it's just nice so if I haven't contacted someone in six months yeah it might give me all the people that we've not contacted in the last six months or had any contact with yeah and let's do an email shot to them and let's do a call list and call them all uh, to keep in touch with them okay so I'm not going to do that because I don't, I don't know what I'm going to come up with at the end Okay, so these are fields now within the database. Okay, so if I say uh, something like country, okay, and I'll pick that and I'll say I just want people in the United Kingdom. Okay, and obviously I can do more criteria and, you know, they've got to be active and, you know, whatever. Yeah. Okay, so now it's asking me um, who has purchased. Yeah. Okay. So I can say who has purchased items in this ca these categories or these specific items by this date range. This is great if you're gonna if you've got a load of stuff in the warehouse. Yeah, and you uh, you know you need to get rid of it. It's like six months old or twelve months old or whatever. Right. So the best chance we've got of selling that stock is to someone that may have bought something similar or bought the same item before. And this allows us to sort of search the the, the purchase history, the invoice history, yeah, and say uh, right, who's purchased this item? Okay. Um, only a truly integrated CRM system could actually do this because it's got to be linked to the accounts and stock and everything else to do that to get that information. Um, not purchased. So who who has not purchased specific items? Yeah. Uh, there's also this little button here to sort of say, but I can just pick a few categories and items, and it's everything but those if I wanted it to be. Okay. And who have I quoted for? Yeah. Uh, you know, and it could be kind of who have I quoted but not bought, or who's bought and and have quote and have got an outstanding quote for. Okay. And then here's my list. So here's the list that meets that criteria. 
Now, if I wanted to, I could just do a quick email shot, a quick fax shot, a quick mail merge, a quick call list. I could just export it to Excel, um, and that's it. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a campaign and, and do a campaign wave. Okay. So I'm going to say yeah, save that. Okay. So we're going to create a new campaign. Okay. So let's go into campaign. Uh, right. A campaign is actually an umbrella. Uh, over a lot of let's say campaign waves that you actually want to do so for example I might want to email someone then I might want to kind of um, call them and I might want to email them again and, that, and a campaign yeah is effectively just an umbrella over those kind of key uh, those w campaign wave activities okay so I'll just say um, uh, new campaign okay and yeah, it's in progress some details about it but effectively it's the um, it's the wave section we're interested okay so let's let's do a new wave um, okay I'm going to create uh, an email type wave so I'll just call this email um, okay so it's automatically put email in there for me but I could do it as a letter a fax or a call okay uh, I'm going to say in progress I'm going to pick my target list which is the one I just created uh, okay, I'm going to put some details down here. Um, I'm going to look at my target this quickly, and you can see that a lot of them are excluded, and that's because on some of these contacts, they've actually got um, the uh, not okay to email. Okay, so obviously you take it off, then when you look at it next time, it will be. Um, but um, what I'm going to do is, so, so I've got I've got some records in here. I'm just going to use this button here to uh, include them. Um, but that's just a way of automatically exclude. Even if you get on the filter, you've got pit records that have, have said don't send me an email. Yeah, it will exclude them anyway. Uh, you've got a column here to say is the email sent. Yeah, and you've also got a send email button up here. Okay, but let's just let's just compose the actual email itself. Okay, so we've got a subject. Yeah, whatever might want to be in it. You could attach some attachments, uh, and this is obviously the body of the email. Uh, for just zoom this up slightly, uh, I've got templates. Uh, I've got merge fields. Yes, yeah, so this is where I can just double-click on one and put a merge field on. But I'll just pick a template, so one I've already created with lots of text and merge fields in it. And then when I click send, it would merge the email with it. Now this is fine for, I would say, you know, if you're sending a couple of hundred emails, yeah, to a prospect list or whatever. But you've just got to be careful nowadays. Uh, that you don't get your um, your IP band as a spammer, um, so this will send it via your Pop3 account, or it'll send it via Exchange if you've got the Exchange plugin. Um, and you know, um, it, in the old days it used to be fine, but um, this is literally going to um, send them all. Uh, it, it it will do timings as well, so it'll send you know ten now, ten in another minute's time, and all that kind of stuff. But um, I think it's better that. Um, you know, you, you keep it to a, a sub a couple of hundred, and if you want to do more than that, let's say you want to send thousands, then you use another plugin uh, which is a link to Mailchimp. Let Mailchimp send the emails, yeah. And all you do is in that particular plugin, you download the tracking and the uh, out opens uh, and the click throughs, all that kind of information, and automatically create you know things from there. Okay, um, so I'll just save and close that one, um, and let's do another wave, yeah, which is let's say a call wave. Okay, so I'll just do this, uh, well, I'll, I'll do a letter first. So I'll do a letter um, and mail merge. Uh, it's in progress. Um, I'll pick on uh, UK customers and whatever. Uh, I'll take some details in here. I'll look at my target list. It's fine. They're all going to be included. Um, and I'll tell you what. For this, I might just uh, exclude none of them. Okay. Uh, I'll do a template and I'll pick on that one there. Uh, and just to write letter to write this letter now and actually produce this letter if you just click on the write letter button yeah it'll actually do a merge for me I don't know how many records are in there to be honest uh, but quite a few um, so there you can see it's merged one and there's another one and there's another one okay so you get the idea you can see print that off and save that as a doc whatever you want to do okay so I'll save that um, and let's do another another wave uh, for uh, calls okay so this is for creating a call pool for people to call so I'll say call yeah it's in progress same uh, prospects and whatever this is here the actual script yeah so um, you know please ask about the new product or whatever yeah and that prompts the actual person calling what the actual call is about uh, let's look at a target list they're all excluded at the minute but I'm going to obviously include them 
and here's my outbound call who, who do I want to make the calls so I'm going to pick obviously everybody yeah so whenever anyone's got time they can come into their outbound calls and actually try and make calls um, and I guess that's about it um, that's the actual campaign so I'll just close that down okay so um, let's do an outbound call okay I've got two types of outbound call but I'll just show you the, the advanced one um, so I'll do, use my call example okay so now I'm a sales I'm a salesperson yeah and what I've uh, and I've been assigned to do a lot of calls yeah and here's my list of calls that I can do um, and when I open it up I've got uh, get a call okay so I say click get a call um, it automatically puts the script in okay that you can actually put in the details in the campaign yeah um, you decide whether you're going to call that person back you've got through or you cancel the call um, callback doesn't put it into your normal callbacks in the calendar yeah it just classes the um, this particular uh, call as needing to needed to be called back so it goes back into the pool yeah so if if, you, if there was 10 of us making these calls in theory someone else could pick that call up as a call back to make you know uh, later on um, and in here you've got across here include cancel calls and callback calls yeah and do the order by postcode or by kind of name it's up to you uh, I can create a quote from here I can create a sales order from here and I can actually create an activity from here as well if I want to so if this was a callback that was very important because they were very interested or whatever or this that you know, there's something definite going on here then I can create that activity from here and I can also create the opportunity an opportunity from here as well um, we also have a link to Skype if you use Skype you can make the call via Skype if you wanted to and if you have the Tappy plugin yeah, then obviously you could make this, uh, and you've got and you've got a phone system that's Tappy Two compliant. Yeah, then you can actually make the call from here as well, and it would ring your phone, and obviously you pick it up, and it dials it dials the number. Okay, so I'm just going to open this record. Yeah, before I kind of uh, actually uh, make uh, say right, I uh, got through. Okay, so on the doll's house, I'm going to say, um, yeah, they really like the product okay um, and I'm gonna say got through okay so when I look at this particular record here and look at their activities yeah you'll be able to see that I've made a call yeah um, it was the about the call example um, campaign you yeah, know if I double click on it yeah it will actually have you know they really like the product you know and a call activity logged against them to say I made that call um, and when you look at their opportunity um, their wave activity so I can open it up quickly call example yeah, you'll be able to see in the activities list. Yeah, you can see that I made that call. Yeah, and uh, there you go. Well, it's not a call back. Uh, it was a call. Uh, so which one did it, which one is it? It's a call that's completed. Uh, it'll be that one there. Okay. Okay, and uh, then obviously then you get the next call, and they say, okay, I need to call that one back. They're not there, available, right? Get the next call. Uh, okay, cancel the call or whatever. Yeah. So it just kind of it gives me the next call after the next call. So it, you know, if I've got a couple of hours free or a morning free. Yeah, and I need to make some calls to to follow up an email shot we've done or ask them about a new product or whatever it might be. It's a dead easy way of doing that. Okay. So I cancel the call and come out of there. All right, so what else have we got in here? Uh, we have something called global search, and what this is about is this will search across leads, uh, prospects, customers, um, and suppliers. So if I type toy in here, yeah, then uh, it'll bring up everybody with toy in their name, their address, whatever. Uh, I've got an exact phrase match here. So if I touch um, toy play, yeah, I won't get any, but if I kind of uh, include any word. Yeah, then you can see that, uh, for example, that one there that's got play in it, but it hasn't got toy in it. Yeah, and obviously anyone with toy in it or play in it. Yeah, um, I can create a new lead and prospect and customer and supplier from here. I can also add tags as well. So let me just kind of search this one down a bit, filter the records a bit. Um, I can uh, add a tag. Yeah, so I can sort of say, um, I don't know, tag four. Yeah, select it and say OK. And what it'll do is, it'll t it'll tag all those filtered records there. Yeah, with that particular tag. Just a, 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 later on when you do a target list, you can use that tag if you wanted to. Um, it's just a kind of you know, on some CRM systems you can tag records, and obviously that just allows you to be able to do that. Um, and you obviously can export this list if you wanted to. 
yeah, to do whatever you wanted to do with it. I'll view it, yeah. Just wait for Excel to open. Okay, so there you can see you actually got the kind of spreadsheet of that particular filtered list. Okay. All right, so from a CRM point of view, we've got some preferences. Uh, like what's my default SLA for customers? When I look at my opportunities, uh, do you want to use the gross, uh, the, the percentage of sale, uh, the, the 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 sales revenue, yeah, or the profit, yeah, as the actual value that goes into the the um, uh, the actual uh, dashboard? Uh, a default uh, filter for my case dashboard. Um, what's my default activity color? Um, so you know, uh, basic kind of preferences. How do I set my territories? Uh, I've got things like there's my opportunity stages that we do, that we discussed earlier. Use definable. Uh, you've also got opportunity to competitors because you can assign competitors against uh, particular opportunities that you might, might be up against, and then you can have a sort of details about those competitors that whether they're good at this or bad at that. Um, and there's my resources, which are my kind of overhead projector, and my conference room, all that kind of stuff, and my types of activity category, yeah, which are obviously use definable as well. Okay, so. Um, I think that's about it for CRM. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, bye.